so Wembley, um, we I don't think I want to go over the whole show, uh, but I I felt I my I'm gonna echo what you said, Mongoose. It felt like it felt like the Super Bowl. It felt like AEW Super Bowl, and it felt big. It felt special. Uh, I love the setup. It looked fantastic. Um, I, I, my only small critique is that like those upper seats were not fully filled, but you still sold eighty one thousand tickets. Weren't they so, by the end of the show? I couldn't tell. There, they, there was there was papered off stuff, but but uh, they did set the paid attendance record. They yeah. beat the they beat Silverdome. The and they beat WrestleMania from 2016. What year is that? Uh, yeah, 30. Um, it was Dallas? 32. Was that Dallas? Dallas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going I'm to say one more those. thing. I'm going to say one more thing. This is the last thing I'm going to say about it. Um, that that show in September, last September, was was a very good show. And what did everybody remember from that show? They only remember the CM Punk stuff. And no they one remember the no one... tantrum backstage. Is no one remembers the fact that the way that that show ended was CM Punk winning that belt and then MJF and him doing that stare down and there was never any there was never any finish up from that. And what has everybody been talking about from all from all in? No one remembers fucking Wembley. Everyone is talking no. about CM Punk. We yeah. we everybody's talking about the temper tantrum that their biggest star threw and and made himself bigger than the whole show. And yeah. that's all you need to know right there. That's all you need to know. Absolutely. Yeah, cuz like no one no one's talking about cuz I thought that I thought that all in was I thought it was really good. I have some gripes about the finish in the main event. I did not like that. Um, but I've, I I mean, I, again, I thought that the CM Punk Samoa Joe match was really good. I thought that the FTR Bucks tag match was better than the second one. I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, oh, it was excellent. Yeah, it was excellent. And then for. I, I might be an outlier on here, but I really enjoy the women's match. That is never something that I thought, you know, you could really say a lot in AEW, but I actually really enjoyed the women's match and I, and it felt good and it felt right. Well, it, the thing about it was the match itself was fine. The thing about it was that, look, man, it's, it's fake. You get to pick who wins and who loses and where they do it when. And so Soraya comes out to We Will Rock You with her family and then Soraya wins. So yes, like yeah. yes, right, like right result, right, right everything. No problem with that. You skipped over the trios match. The trios match was excellent, and yes. then the Takeshita pinning Kenny. Yes, it was great good stuff, brother. Yeah. Um, my only my, my, look, I get it about the women's match. I I understand, but um, it. I just hope this isn't a long thing. It's going to be a a, a long deal with her's champ. Is there's people there that are maybe a little little better than her in 2023 than what she is um, that probably deserve that belt a little bit more than she does. So hopefully this isn't going to be a long reign. I and they have they now have a pay per view coming up on October 1st and then they have full, they have full gear. Yep. And I I I don't see they they have to be smart enough to see that she's not the long term plan. But at that show at that time. I, if I was booking a man, I, that's what I'd have done. Is I'd have had her go over, and the fact that, um, you know, that she pinned, she pinned Tony, right? I think so. I don't. I don't. I don't. Because, I, don't I don't like because Britt had, Brit, Brit had Sheeta. Brit had Sheeta in the lockjaw or whatever, and then uh, yeah. Soraya pinned Tony, right? Right, because it was like the end of the Outcast or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's it good stories. So I, I didn't have a problem with that at all. Yeah, I don't Which, like. By to the way, Tony Storm is awesome. She's awesome, she's but I don't awesome. like that. I don't like that new gimmick, though. It's I. I, I was just gonna say her new gimmick's the best gimmick she's had in years. Tony losing her mind, kind of in her underwear, makeup half done, uh, like looking like a being a crazy person. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Maybe I haven't seen enough of it yet, because maybe maybe that's on me. But um, she, dude, she. Spoiler alert: she shows up in All Out uh, to. Um, you know, do a, a run in in the match in the the women's match there. Um, we're only led to believe that she's just been waiting under the ring for hours and hours and hours, and she literally is in a bathrobe in her underwear with her makeup kind of done and her hair like Marilyn Monroe, and does a run in, like, <laughs> dude, I'm in, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm all the way in. I have, I absolutely love it, man. Um, yeah, I think my favorite match of the night 
uh, for All In was the Sting match. I thought the Sting match, that, that was my favorite match the whole entire night. I had so much fun watching that match. It was so good. So good. They haven't booked anybody better than Sting since they started a company. Sting yep. is the best book person in the company. You Darby Allen's great. I was going to say, I, I'm more impressed every time I see Strickland now too, man. I, I've I've kind of, I liked him a lot in NXT. Then I kind of wasn't really in on him, you know, too much in AEW because he kind of floundered around. He didn't really know what to do with him. But well, he that fucked guy, around with Keith Lee for forever. He's great. He, Strickland's great. Yeah. I really want to see Strickland get like a run, like like with a the a good storyline, something that makes sense. Like like put him in a prominent spot because I think like the dude is like really good, and he should he he's been working good enough to get the shine somewhere. I mean he's already been a tag champion once. Like let's maybe throw him in there with Moxley. That's a guy that should be your Ring of Honor champ. If you're if you're not going to use Ring of Honor as developmental. It should be like Jack Perry and Strickland fighting for that belt is what it should be. And hook. Yeah. Hook. Yep. 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 Get it off of Claudio. It's not doing us any good with him. Get that Strickland should be the ROH champ. Yeah. I I just I really I thought that the Sting match was my favorite match of the night. Uh that um I lo- I love the Stadium Stampede, man. I thought the Stadium Stampede was great. I really did. Like for 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 what it was and for who was in it and everything i i i had a lot of fun watching that man i thought that they did a great job with that match like that entire the entire card there's nothing that was on that that i i'm not going to say that wasn't a good match but i'm going to say there's nothing on that that didn't feel pay-per-view yes everything on that show felt pay-per-view and that's what was really cool about that yes um and then I, I still think that Will, you know, we've been talking about it here a lot. Uh, Will Ospreay is the best in the world right now. Uh, he had a great match with Jericho. Uh, Jericho just still proving he can go out and still do it. And I thought that they had a, an excellent match. Um, and then the, the Bay Bay, uh, Adam Cole and MJF, it was a big moment. The match, the match felt big. When they finally got to the end, it felt big. And then they just did, they just shit all over that ending. And then, but it was all to get them to hug in the end. Um, but I don't, I, we still, I, we still could have got there without that, 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 that double pin was completely unnecessary. It felt like weird fan yeah. service, like weird fan service. Yeah. Um. And so I, it, I don't know, like, and maybe it was all done just to get the five more, like to play off the five more minutes thing. Maybe that was it. It was unnecessary. Um, but the fact that we got a finish that was, you know, it was roll up. It wasn't his move. It wasn't a tap out. I did appreciate that because it's not like this story is going to end tomorrow. Um and I, I was actually all in on the Roddy Strong spots because every time yeah. I thought we were going to see a turn, we didn't. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I actually, I actually did like that, especially at the end when Cole threw the belt out of the ring, pissed off, and then it, he ends up, it, it ends up looking really human because, like, if you're my friend, John, and if you beat me in something that mattered to me, I'd be mad at you, yeah, or I'd be mad, but I'm not mad at you. So like you're mad, right? You throw like you throw your golf club or whatever. Yeah. But then you're like, ah, I still got my brother, and that right. was, that actually felt authentic there. I I really did like that part. Yeah, because while I was watching it, I hated the Roddy Strong part, and then as as like time went on, I thought about it. I was like, damn, like they did it. They did it right, and they did. I I felt I felt all in was uh, fantastic. I because I, I first watched it in spots because I was on my way home because I was away that weekend. But then um I was sat and watched the whole thing start to finish and I thought it was fantastic. Um and then you know it's all clouded by the CM Punk stuff. So um but then that leads us to all out, and that's something that I didn't get to watch this weekend. Something had to something something couldn't make the cut and it was all out. And it was mainly because of the CM Punk stuff, and I was just irritated with all of it. Um but yeah, I I I have been planning to watch it this week at some point. You're you're doing yourself a disservice as a wrestling fan and as somebody that knows all of these people that worked on this show, not watching that show. 